Welcome back to the show, guys. I'm Titus, your host, and I'm with the highly requested Olivia Helton. Hello, guys. And Olivia has a YouTube channel. So I've known her since before, she, as she was born, not before she <laughs> <Yes>. was born. <laughs> but um, her dad's Johnny, Johnny Helton, and my wife's good friends with her mom, Heather. And then you guys probably, some of you will remember, some probably forget, but her, your brother started a YouTube oh, channel. Oh, Actually, I think he started before I did. He did. And uh, he just, I don't know, he probably just got tired dealing with it. or It got too much with his job and everything. Yeah. So, Foul Assassins, he still has a channel, still has videos up. But Olivia's video, is, or channel is Olivia Helton. So, O-L-I-V-I-A Helton. O-L-I-V-I-A. H-E-L-T-O-N. Yeah. And you, when did you hit? You hit over 2,000 subscribers a couple months ago? Yeah, I think in the end of December. End of December? Yes. Uh, and you didn't even think you'd grow that fast. No, I did not think it at all. Yeah, what, so uh, kind of let's tell us about yourself a little bit. Well, <laughs> how you know how old you are? Uh, I'm 18. Uh, I just finished school in December. I'm in college, and that's about it. Not yeah. really much going on. Yeah. What made you want to start a channel? Actually, Dad is the reason I started my channel. Dad wanted me to just start recording because he thought it'd go good, mm. and I didn't really think it'd go anywhere at all. So. I started it and I kind of just started it for fun because like I just like looking back on the videos of course yeah, yeah, and watching sure. the memories and stuff. But then my first video got like a ton of views and mm. like it got way bigger than I thought it was going to be. So then we kind of got like excited and of course we just did more mm. and I don't know it just grew from there but I like doing them. I enjoy it. Yeah. And it doesn't take mm. long at all to edit because I just do them quick. So do you edit on your phone? Yeah I just use the using? iMovie on Apple. Yeah. Yeah and it's pretty quick. And, and that's the thing is, I actually was thinking this uh, the other day, because um, I tried to go, for, I started with the GoPro, and I still use the GoPro, it's so convenient, so easy, but I was like, as me, as a hunter, I want to watch, it's not, I want to watch a bird way out there, because mm -hmm. it's hard with the GoPro, right? And yes. I want to watch them come way in, so I guess I got, this year I got my brain wrapped around, I have to do it like that, instead of just getting the hunt. Yeah. And looking back, uh, I regret it a little bit because you're at least still, because there's things you're going to capture on a GoPro. Yeah, that you can't capture on like a camera. Exactly. Or anything. So I was like, ah, I kind of need to get over that. But it, mind you, this is talking from somebody that's been wearing that thing on their head for five years. And it's just like, oh, I'm just tired. I of it. like the GoPro though, because like I like the, the far view of it. And mm -hmm. then I like using the shot cam if I can get it on in time, because then it's like a close up at the same yeah. time as the GoPro and you can edit it to where it looks cool. I know. And it's still, it's still enjoyable to watch, you know? Yeah. But I guess I had in my mind I want this, all this stuff. So, but anyways, hey, every year you learn something, change something. But you've been really successful at it. You've done really good. And I mean, I agree with your dad. Um, a girl out in the outdoors doing that stuff that's that's gonna draw so much attention. That's I think the main reason it got mm -hmm. so big. Because there's a lot of other girls that do it, but no, they don't put themselves out there. No, so and it's. Yeah. I'm sure. How have you dealt with any negativity at all? Uh, or has it been pretty good? The it's people have been honestly, good it's you? been pretty good. I've had like just like two or three people, but that's like not a lot at all. No, not compared nothing. to how long I've been doing it. Mm -hmm. I so think is it's this been your like second or third year. I think this is my second. Well, I started in December 2020. Okay, that was my first like upload. Okay, and then yeah, it's 2022. Yeah, that's awesome. And then and now all of a sudden people they're reaching out to you. It's just starting. It's yeah, that part growing. is exciting. Mm -hmm. Like the different companies and. Everywhere that like reaches out, of course you don't accept them all, but right. like the different like people like I'd never thought that would have like did, and mm -hmm. so that's exciting. Yeah. How well tell us? <clears throat> I kind of already said, but tell us your YouTube channel, how to find you, and then your Instagram and whatever else. Uh, my media. YouTube is just Olivia Helton. It's just my name, and then my Instagram is Olivia underscore Helton. I think underscore. Okay. It's the and same. That's everywhere they can find you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so check her out, guys. Like I said, I've I've known her since she was born. Her and her sister Cheyenne, they're she's on videos too. And Johnny <laughs> yes. and Jack, Jack's on there. And Jack has a channel, uh, Full Strap Outdoors. So if you want to look up more content, check them out. They're good, good, clean, wholesome, fun, just like we try to be the same way. So, so kind of just let's go over the duck season. Like, how'd your duck season go for you? And are what do you use? Kind of tell us your whole setup, like decoys, gun, shells, like everything you like, use. Okay, so the decoys, that is Jack and my dad. They mm -hmm. pick which ones they use and like which ones they don't. And I don't really do anything. I just help them throw it out and then pull them in. So I don't know anything really certain on the decoys. But as far as my gun, okay, so I have a 
Dickinson 12 gauge. Mm -hmm. And I've shot that for turkey. I've shot it for like dove season and then duck. But duck season, I don't know why it makes a difference, but I feel like it just like it, um, like the, I can't even think of what The shoulder pad? Yes. <coughs> it's thick, but it still like kicks so hard. Mm -hmm. And so like even Jack said, it, it's weird. I don't know why it does, but it kicks a lot harder. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I just can't shoot like good enough with Is it. Is it because you think you're semi like in the back of your head thinking of the kick? I think so. <clears throat> and because I know like every time I shoot, it like gives me a headache. Mm -hmm. So like I dread to shoot. Like when ducks are coming above me, I like I don't even shoot when I have my 12 gauge because really? I know it's going to hurt too much. But and that's weird because when I'm shooting like turkey or dove, I like I don't even feel it. Mm. So I don't know why that makes a difference. But I switched to my brother's. I think it's a Stoger 20 gauge. Uh huh. And okay, so I couldn't hit anything with my 12 like mm. at all. Like it was rare. Like we kind of made a joke out of it. Mm. But as soon as I switched to my t or my brother's 20, it was like a totally different story. And I started hitting ducks. It was actually enjoyable because like I yeah, I'd go them. out and I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna kill a duck today because mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many. I think I had like six hunts in a row. I went with Dad and Jack, and I never killed a single thing. So, like, it kind of got to the point where I was just like, okay, well, I'll just video them. And, mm. like, I didn't expect anything out of it. But I then, noticed you when you were doing that, too. Like, yeah. you were like, wonder why she's not, you know, shooting. Yeah. And, well, I also had a short period last year where I had to have surgery. And That's I right. couldn't shoot for, like, I think it was, like, two months. Mm. And I ended up getting to hunt the last junior hunt. Mm. And I didn't I use your gun? Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. Which did you do okay with that? I think I got That one six. right there, right? Was it, Did you use that one? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you I did liked that. Yeah. It's a nice gun. But so I got like six that day. So that was actually better than I had That's, been shooting. That was your best day probably yeah, you've had. That huh? year. And then so this year I switched to Jack's twenty and I'll probably just use that from now on because it went way better than my twelve. And I think he had and I think what's funny is I think he has a full choke he does. kicks in that. Yes, he does. So kind of proves again my point that I've said on these podcasts before about full chokes. People got this thing stuck in their head, full choke, full choke. It's like a laser dart. But it's like I can't tell how many people I've seen. I've heard of that shot better. Oh, no, I shoot way better with it. Because it, it just depends. It depends on the gun. It depends on the choke. But you have to. Did you, have you ever thrown that on paper and seen what the pattern looks no, like? No, I've never or did Jack, it. Jack has, though, hasn't he? He might have on his channel. I know he did once, I think, on a yeah. video. With that gun? I don't know if it was that gun. It might have been his dad's. I think it might have been, but I'm or not for sure. Um, what shells did you shoot mainly this year? Or you're not sure. Don't that, remember. Well, I know we shot, like, a whole bunch. We shot, like, Kent's. I think we shot... Uh, just the Winchester. I know. What's that other we, one? We switched a lot. The Super X. You probably shot There's the Kent. What's that new one? I know. I, my main. I think we I shot that a lot. I can see it in my head and I can't <laughs> think of it. I can't think There's of what it's called. There's two of them this year. Doggone it. That's going to drive me nuts. Uh, Migra? Yeah, I think so. Is it Migra? Are the shells white? I'm yeah. Pretty, yeah. I think I shot those a okay, lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I he like bought those. a case or two of those. Yeah. Seemed like everybody was pretty happy. The only thing I've heard about those shells is like if you drop them in the water, they get wet. They. I never dropped them. So I have no idea. Yeah. But I have some friends that use them. They said they liked them, but he goes, just be careful because I guess the crimps aren't maybe closed all the way. They're not sealed, you know. But uh, the cool thing is, is uh, well, I don't want to jump ahead. I was going to say some other stuff about your channel. But um, let's see. So we went over your gun, went over the shells. Uh, did you keep a bird count? Have you been keeping a log of what you okay. get and all that? I I think I got like 34 this year, mm. which is not great. But for me, that that's is your best, right? Yeah, that's my best yeah. I did. Yeah, and here's I think, the, go ahead. No, I was just going to say this is my fourth year hunting, I'm, I believe. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think the first year I got close to it because I, I don't remember what I got because I didn't write it down. But I think I got close to 34, but I know this year was my best. Okay. And well, I got, like, I think I had, until I switched over to Jack's 20 gauge, I think I had, like, four birds. Really? So it was, like, the last half a season that I actually killed things. Oh. Huh. Well, that just proves, I mean, you got to shoot what's comfortable. Now, when you threw up that other gun, was it comfortable for you? Or did yeah. you not even? But no, it's just I felt until you shot it. it. It's when I shot. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's all. And see, the thing is, when you're buying a gun, for anybody listening, it's like you kind of don't know that part either until yeah, you can until throw it up you your shoulder it. until you shoot it, you know. So, but yeah, we got, went over shells, gun. I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, wh what about like your gear and stuff? What are you using for, like, waders? Uh, waders, right now, I have tied wee waders. Mm. Do you like those? Yeah, I like them. They're not very warm for mm. me because, like, I just feel like I need warmer for, like, the foot insulation. Yeah. I think it's 600. Oh, that is pretty low, though. Yeah, and so I usually just wear, like, a pair of socks and stuff, but towards the end of the season, it got cold. Yeah. Yeah, that because I'm the same way. I don't like really hot boots for around here because we yeah. have warm Well, during, like, the season. beginning of season, yeah. you get so hot, it's yeah. miserable. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, you're, December, January, yeah. 
600 is a little it's that there's a funny story behind that actually so matt when my brother-in-law when he was getting into duck hunting he was like uh, what you know what boots do you have and like what you know this was before i had sick waiters and i was like um i think i have 600s or something like that i was telling him and didn't he and for join, a big though? guy, he gets cold easy, though. Like, Matt, <laughs> Matt knows. He'll say it right here. He's like, he gets super cold, but he sweats like crazy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he he was out there. It was like, January, he's like, I'm freezing, man. I can't feel my feet and all this stuff. I'm like, dude, I don't get what the problem is. Well, we were walking back to the truck, and I looked down. I go, I go mine are 602, and I, like, looked at him. They were 1,200s. <laughs> <laughs> That's double. And he was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so That's I was funny. like, dude, as much as you sweat, though, how are you getting cold? I think because he sweats. Yeah, it, it makes him cold, cold, you know, and part of that is knowing when to shed layers and when to not have layers. And you guys have a, a big game background that helps you a lot yeah. because you know about that stuff. You know, if you're hiking, you really got to sh- keep the layers down. And then when you go to glass, put the layers yes. on. It totally makes a difference on that. Yeah. But we have it figured out perfect now. So I have like the whole setup. Do you, you know exactly what I you got to exactly do? I know exactly what I got to wear for every season. Yeah, that's funny. Like, OK, so. But what are you wearing like when you go out, when you're ready to walk out to the pond? To the pond, I usually just wear like a long sleeve t-shirt. Mm. And then once Even I get out Even if it's there, cold? Yes, because you start sweating exactly. if you walk long enough and it gets miserable. So you're and smart, Olivia. <laughs> Some <laughs> yeah. people who don't figure that out. Surprisingly. Five minutes in, oh, I got to take this off. I'm like, dude, I told you. Yeah. You just be even cold if for you a start, few minutes. I was like, even if you start off cold, it, yep. it totally doesn't matter because you're going to warm up so fast. Yeah. Yep. That's good though. And I think that big game experience... We'll go into some of that in a minute, but helps you out a lot. It does. Because your dad can tell you something. Your friends can tell you something. But until you, you won't know until you yourself, try it. Yeah. So it's funny that you're smart enough to know, hey, I'm going to be cold for five minutes probably, <laughs> but I'm going to get warm, you know? Yes. And that's and then what happens is if you get behind the power curve on that and you get sweaty, now you're just, it's yeah. making it worse. It so, is. Yeah. There's, there's so many things like little things like that that you forget to teach other people and i was like seeing something back there it's warm in here huh it's a little hot sir gets the air going let me open this window so anything else i'm trying to think of anything else we can go over what what was the coolest bird that you shot this season uh okay so i didn't even get a mallard this season i was so bummed over that because mallards are my favorite bird yeah but i I did get um my first buffalo head i know people do not like buffalo heads Mm -hmm. But I but had it's your never. First, though. Yes, and so I was excited, and I actually got it the first day I got my first limit, so that made it oh, even wow. better. Cool, and that was with Johnny, wasn't it? Uh, no, my dad. Was it your dad? Okay, I thought there was. We you... both limited that day. Well, wasn't that your second limit with with Johnny. your brother? Yeah, and I was in the same spot. Really? Yeah, I I said that was my lucky spot. Apparently. Oh, it was that's <laughs> funny? Uh, yeah, because that one. With Johnny, that was fourteen birds, what seven species? Yeah, that day he had an awesome bag. Yeah, we, I, I got my Jake right Pintel. Here. Yeah, he got his gadwall. He had a widgeon. Cinnamons. Yeah, he had everything. Did you shoot a cinnamon too that day? Yeah, that's we, cool. We didn't know at first because we both shot and he didn't know I shot and I didn't know he shot. Uh, and I was like, yes, and he's like, I got that, and I was like, I got that. Uh-huh. And then I had it on video on my GoPro, so we rewind it, and he's uh, like, okay, you did get see, that. See, yeah. And well, you probably didn't have your shot cam on, but no, that I shot didn't. cam has saved a lot of questions. It does. It really does. I can't tell you how many birds like I think I shot or Jack thinks he thought mm-hmm. shot, and then usually it's Jack getting it though. But <laughs> when we watch it, it makes a difference because you can tell it's yeah. close up. Yeah, it's it's, and that's not why we buy is they who I shot this bird, but it's just yeah. kind of nice to know like, did I did I miss because I shot behind and they got it? Like you just yeah, want to know. Yeah, actually, when I when okay, so it was my papa's uh, shot cam. So when I first started using it, it actually like dad hooked it up to mine and like we got to. Um, like I figured out how to use it mm. and I used it for a little bit, but it did help me cause like I was shooting way in front of the birds cause I always thought really? like I didn't lead enough. But once I started like reviewing all the clips, like there was some, I was behind it of course, cause you never know, mm. but most of them I was just leading too far mm. and I would have never guessed that. Right. That's rare. Most people are shooting behind. Yeah, I think it's cause in my head, dad's always telling me, no, lead it, lead it. And he uh. didn't think I was leading it. So I pulled it so far ahead of it that I didn't hit it. Oh yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Most a lot of my misses since I got the shot cam and really studied where my misses were, which were behind. I now when I miss, a lot of times it's in front. Like when they're close, you know, if they're twenty yards, and I'm like, oh, I put it way in front of me, and I'm like, man, how did I miss that? You yeah. know, it's that's now. So, but that, I'd rather miss in front any day because most of the time our tendency is to be behind. Yeah. A lot of my problem, too, when I first, like, last year, mostly this year, I was better about it. Mm. But I'd shoot and I'd drop the gun. I wouldn't shoot and, like, follow through. Oh, uh, yeah. And that makes a big difference for me. So yep. I had to learn to, like, 
not drop it because it drove dad crazy. Yeah. Or like, do you find yourself after you hit one, you stop and you have two more shells yes. and you could shoot another and shoot one? shoot another bird. I do that all the time. Yeah. I like feel like I have to watch it drop to make sure it dies. And I'm kind of like that, that too, which that's kind of a good, I mean, that's a good habit as well, though. There's nothing wrong with that because, you know, in California, in the grasslands, when we're in these toolies, I mean, they don't take them long if they're no. wounded. And you don't have a dog? Oh, no. I can't away. tell you how many birds I lost. I lost yeah. a beautiful vision this year. I went on a hunt with Courtney, and we didn't end up getting anything. But I, she shot a bird, and we lost in the toolies. And then later on, I water swatted one, and I shot it twice. And, like, we know it hit mm-hmm. it because it was flopping and everything. But it got into the toolies, and I searched for, like, 30 minutes, and it was nowhere. It was, That's like, not even a chance of finding yeah. it. Yeah. That's such a bummer. Is that is that something I've never even thought of this or asked this, but is that something ever in the back of your mind about a dog? Uh, sometimes, but then again, cause like when it gets lost in the toolies, like, of course you're like, oh, I wish I had a dog cause mm-hmm. they would have found it. But like, then again, like I love going out to the bird mm-hmm. and like just seeing what I got and then like retrieving it. And of course looking for a band, even though it's like yeah. not ever going to be a band hardly, but like, I think it's exciting cause I get to go pick it out or pick it up and like see what it yeah. is and review it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So Something else that uh, is coming up. Well, let's talk about this. What about that deer hunt? I actually haven't even watched. Um, I haven't watched this last one that you did eight days ago. Oh, that's that was nothing. It was me and Dad just. Um, we did a road. Was that hunt. from? Oh, okay. It was before actually before Jack got his buck the weekend before. Oh, okay. But you shot a really nice buck this year. Tall yes, them there. That was We've, the best hunt I've ever. Yeah, been tell on. us about the whole hunt. Just kind of walk us through from the beginning. Well, of the I was hunt. already in the camp in Wyoming because I. Of you know, yeah, I help in the camp up there, and so Dad drove up and he met me, him and Jack, and then Thomas and your dad, mm. and so we hiked up and we found a camp, and I think it was my third day. So the first day, we didn't really know where to go because like we just didn't know the area. Mm. Dad always hunts in the other like region, zone. Or, yeah, yeah, zone, and so we like started off, and I think the first morning, I believe we went t- together. I'm trying to remember. I, it was either the first or second morning. No, no, mm. the first morning we went together. And me and Jack and Dad, we found two bucks where we were, and I could have shot either of them. Mm -hmm. And one was just super tiny, and then one was like a four-by-four, but it was small. Mm -hmm. And I think just thinking Wyoming in my head, I was like, okay, I can do better than this. I was like, it's only the first day. And I think Jack Jack was like begging me to shoot it. He named it Fred. I don't (laughs) know why. And so, like, he was like, come on, just shoot it. And I, like, I didn't want to because, like, I thought in my head, like, going to Wyoming, well, I'm going to find And you've shot a deer before, haven't you? Yes. So you kind of wanted to I kind of wanted to wait yeah. and do something that I knew I would love. Because if I shot that, I'd always feel like, okay, I wonder if I would have waited right. if I would have got something else. And so, anyways, like, we ended up passing him up. And then, like, 10 minutes before we walked down that hill, because we had to walk up this stupid, like, it's not even that hard. But it was, like, straight up. So it, like, took your breath away. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just one of those. And then the high elevation. But before we walked down that... It was like 10 minutes before, like you couldn't shoot anymore. Mm. And we had seen this buck and it hopped out of a, like a pile of trees that we had been watching like all day. And it was way closer. Mm. And it actually, I have it on video. I, you can't really see it close, but it runs up right to where we are. I could have never shot it because it came up so fast. Like I'm not that good. It wasn't ready. Yeah. But we had the gun and everything. And I didn't want it anyways because it didn't even look as big as the last one we had seen. Really? But like, yeah, it, it was still nice looking. I think if it would have been like more like Towards wide. Towards the end. Yeah. Oh. Even, like, wider or anything, like, it just wasn't that many points. I think it was a three-by-three. Three. Mm. And so, anyways, that morning passed. So, then we're like, okay, well, Thomas said he'd shoot the four-by-four four if we seen it again. So, the next morning, we took them up there, and, of course, we didn't see anything. Mm-hmm. Like, we seen some doe. And so, that evening, him and Thomas hiked up another mountain to the left of us to, mm-hmm. like, glass over the other area because it was higher. And that morning was just, like, nothing. So, we just went back, and I think we separated that evening and, like, just watched different places. And then, so, the third morning, they were getting to the point where, like, okay, well, there's no, like, bucks here that are, like, we can actually get on, mm-hmm. and we can't even find any. So, they were, like, okay, so, the next morning, let's, if we can't figure it out, let's, like, um, they wanted to drive across the whole other zone, like, and make a new camp and hike into there and just road hunt more. And I am not a road hunter. Yeah. I like going on the experience and, like, finding, like, I like working for it. I feel like working for it, it actually feels like... Mm-hmm. You achieve something. More. Right. Oh, you do, though. Yeah. Sure. So I was like, Dad, can we wait till like the fourth day to do that and just see? And he's like, OK. He's like, well, we can try hiking up that tomorrow. And he pointed towards like this mountain <laughs> so far away. I was like, Dad, I don't know. And he's like, he's like, no, it won't be that bad. And so the next morning, Thomas and your dad went somewhere else to like the right. And we went to the left and it was like up so many places. Dad yeah. that morning, he'd be like, OK, it's this ridge. And as soon as we get to it, me and Jack would look at each other and he'd just keep walking. 
And so we'd keep walking. It happened like four times. We got to, it was literally like we walked forever. (laughs) And so finally me and Jack were just dying. Like we were staying up with them, but we were tired. Mm -hmm. And we get to this ridge and it looked awesome. I was thinking like right there, we were going to find something that morning. Cause like the whole view of it, like it just looked like you're going to find a monster buck. Mm -hmm. And from where we were, you could actually see the other zone that we're not allowed to hunt. And there was some huge bucks on that. So we were thinking, okay, maybe they'll come into this area. And we never, we seen quite a few bucks. I think we seen 18 in total that morning before it like got where they bedded. Mm -hmm. But none like close enough or if they were close enough, it was none that like we wanted to actually take a shot on. Yeah. And so they went, I think they went to like the other side of the mountain to view the zone we couldn't hunt just to watch the bucks to see Mm -hmm. if they could get any videos. And while they were gone, I had seen a buck and it was like, I think it was like over a thousand yards away. It was, it was so far. And anyways, it looked so big. Like, my heart was just pounding. I couldn't even start my video because I didn't want to take my eyes off of it. And it just came out of the timber from far away. And so, like, I'm trying to get their attention. And I turned around, and they're gone. So, like, I turned around and, like, run up. I didn't see him. So I turned around and run back. And I'm, like, watching it. And I was like, I got to show my dad. He won't believe me. Because it looked so wide and so, like, high. Like, it just looked massive from far away. You can tell the difference from what you've been seeing. Yeah. And so you can tell the difference if you, like, and plus, I've, like, I've hunted before. And so, like, I know, like, the difference between them. Mm. but it was crazy and by the time dad got back of course it was gone uh. and so he never seen it but i was like can we go after it and he was like well that's a few miles away and i was like well i was like we might as well just try and so me and dad and jack we waited we had breakfast mountain house <laughs> and we took <laughs> omelet. off <laughs> mountain yeah. house omelet. Uh, those things are some are great <laughs> some are like oh yeah but anyway so we took off and we went up the mountain and we found like a spot and dad and jack they fell asleep. It was mm. like the middle of the day. And so I sat you, there. Did you move that way towards that one you seen? Yeah. Or did we, you stay there? No, no, no. We went towards it and tried to okay. like find it and get like a better view of where we could see where it was at. And we got to one point and where we could see the whole area that it was sitting at. And so like they went to take a nap and like I, I can't take naps anyways. So I just wanted to like glass. And of course, like where we were glassing, it was like 700 yards away, I think, mm-hmm. or 600 yards It just depends what area you were watching. But where the buck was I seen, it was like 800 yards from us. Okay. And so, like, I was watching, and I had spotted a deer, and I was, like, shocked because I seen it, like, feeding. And I was like, Dad, it's a buck. And he was like, what? He was like, you spotted something? And I, like, woke him up. And so, like, we looked at it, and it, like, it went behind a tree, and we never seen it again. So we Mm -hmm. were just watching for it to come out. Did he see it at all? He did. I don't think he's seen it through. I think I had the nice one and then Jack wanted to look. And by the time dad got to it, it Mm. was gone. So he only seen it through the binoculars. So he couldn't really see how big it was. But it didn't look very big. I think it was a three by three, if I remember right. And I would have shot it because like it was like I didn't want to road hunt. I just Mm. I don't like road hunting. And so like I was going to shoot it, but then it went behind a tree. And so I just stayed watching. Mm. So they went and like sat back down and I spotted. uh, Okay, it was bedded. So I thought it was a doe. I was watching it and I don't know how far away it was. But, like, I thought it was a doe. And so, like, I told Dad, and Dad was looking through his binoculars, and he's like, okay, just keep watching it. And, like, I think it was, like, 30 minutes later, like, I was just sitting there, like, scoping the area Mm because, like, I wanted to find something. And I was already shocked that I had found two. And so, all of a sudden, that deer and then two other ones start running towards us. And I think, I don't even know what spooked them. Something spooked them. And they were running towards us, and I was like, Dad, Dad. And, like, he, like, got up. We got the gun out really fast because they were, like, running closer, and that's better. Mm -hmm. And so they get to, I think it was, like, 500 yards or something. Or, no, I shot my shot at 457, I think. So it was, like, it was, like, 500 yards away. Mm -hmm. And they were getting, so we got into place, and I couldn't get on it fast enough. And there was three, and I didn't know which one Dad wanted me to shoot because he was the one looking this time Mm -hmm. to see what they looked like. And so I had no idea what to do. So I was, like, getting my gun all ready, and... I, I didn't get on him in time and they went behind like a little tree and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, dad, because I thought he was going to be like mm-hmm. upset. And of course he wouldn't be. But like at that moment, right. you're like stressed out. And I usually don't get nervous. But I think the fact that I thought I messed it up and they were gone, my heart was just pounding. Mm-hmm. And so they come out again and dad's like, get ready, get ready. And he's like, he's like, it's the one behind. It's the one behind. So I like I get on it and I had to wait for the it, I think it was a little spike in front of it. Mm-hmm. I had to wait for him to move. And I shot and he dropped and it was like such a relief. But oh, man. it was so much fun. Like that just crushed hunt, him, huh? Yeah. And he didn't get up again. He at never all? got up again. I think I might have hit shot a little high and spined him, oh, okay. but he died so fast. Yeah. Yeah. But who cares? It was so much fun. That That's is cool. my favorite hunt I've ever been on. Wow. Like the experience. You worked, you worked hard for it. Oh my word. We hiked in a little over five miles. 
and then we had to hike it out. And <laughs> which was farther? Because you are didn't you? So you mean five miles from the truck or five miles from your camp? Camp. And that was already how many couple miles from the truck? I think so. it was like a mile from the truck. Okay, so you. you but we went to there. the camp that night and we stayed the night at the camp. And then the next morning we woke up and brought it into town. But overall that day we hiked over ten miles. I was so tired, but I it bet. was so much fun because like my adrenaline was going. So of course on the way back I wasn't as tired. Right. But like it was just my favorite hunt. I wish I could do those all the time. Oh no, Ken. <laughs> so it was a four by four, right? It was a four Did by five. A four by five. Wow. Yeah, it had one little side. That's right. Did you do you know how many inches it was? Uh, I think Dad said it was like twenty six, barely. That is a nice buck. Yeah, it and was. Is it young. really that wide? Wow. Yeah, That's it didn't nice look buck. it. I thought it was. Dad said it at first. He thought it was like twenty five, but then when we got home, he measured it again. He was like, "This is barely twenty six. But and by the way, her dad's been a guide for years, so yeah. it's he does the measuring, knows all that stuff. Yeah, but he knows that's everything. A, that's a nice buck. Six, oh, I was so inches. excited. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, how, did you carry the whole deer out on your back? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we split that up evenly. <laughs> did Jack I, carry anything on his back? Jack actually did. And it was like a funny story because we carried like the exact same amount, uh -huh. but mine was like barely heavier. And we did not know that. Like, we did not oh, plan really? that. And so, like, now we just tease Jack because, of course, Jack can carry way more than me. He's mm. stronger than I am. But it just like happened to be like mine was barely heavier. So, we were joking about yeah. it. But that next day we hiked out, he took so much weight. Like, to show that he could. So, like, it was way easier for me. Oh, so you were joking that night about it, and the next morning yeah. he's like, okay, that's it. Because we know, of course, he's stronger, oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he wanted to do more the next day. Yeah, that's cool. That's super cool. That is, my dad and Thomas, they had fun for sure being with you guys. I know, like, they were, Thomas's feet got pretty messed up or something yeah. from what he was saying. That I've never seen that terrible. happen to him. Yeah, it did. It did. You don't know, and you don't understand our fill for him until <laughs> it happens to you. But like when we went out of San Joaquin that day, you know, you guys know the story. I already yes. talked about it on here, but it was, that was, I was like, I've never experienced nothing like that ever. And I've been up hiking and hunting my whole life, you yeah. know, since I was a little kid. So it's not fun. And it, it really didn't have to do with age, honestly, because I mean, I'm still pretty active, but it was like, not saying I go out and hike like that all the time, mm -hmm. but I just went in there dehydrated was the bottom line. In fact, ever since then, I've drank so much more water because I used to drink a lot of water. Then the last couple of years, I haven't been good at it. I've just been too much sodas and tea. I drink really good on water. The thing yeah. I, like, I, I'm not a huge soda drinker, but mm. when it comes Vi to, like. Vi it's not either. My daughter. You know, daughter. Yeah. So I drink water. I don't really drink soda. And, but the thing that gets me is Red Bulls. I, <laughs> I love Red Bulls. Yep. So that's the thing I have to back off, especially, like, off season. Off, off season, season, yeah. I still want to drink them, and I shouldn't. I so I try not to. Yeah. I'm the same way. I've really been, I've stayed I've stayed faithful for the most part, guys. Everybody, I told everybody I was getting off that stuff. And I've cracked maybe a, maybe two pomegranates. I can't <laughs> help. That's my favorite. Like, that's... Uh, but, yeah, it was it's battering duck season. You're trying to stay awake. You're getting up early. You're staying up late. You're doing it all over again. So, yeah, you just go, go, go. go. During that's, duck season, I get, like, two hours of sleep every time. Yeah, right? It's like That's nothing. the max. Yeah. You know, you always think, I'm going to get to bed early tonight. I'm going to get to bed at like 9 o'clock. never happens. never happens. In 20 plus years, I've never, ever done it yet. So, turkey season. Now, you're not a junior no more. So no, I'm not. You don't so, get to I go can't go on the junior hunt. Because this weekend. Yeah, Jack's excited. Are you going with him on that to video? Or what do you I got I don't planned? think so. I think he's going with Papa. Okay. And plus, that's the day of the box social thing we oh, have. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, you're not going to be out there, huh? Mm -mm. That's a bummer. I'll be cooking. Um, <laughs> what about next week? Yes, I'll be for for sure be going. I don't know where we're going yet, though. Okay. But I am excited. You plan on doing a lot of hunts and putting some videos out? Yeah, I want to I want to try turkey season, like, of course, the whole season, anytime I get to go. But I'm going to start off this year with my shotgun and try to get one. And then if I get one, do the rest with my bow. Because last year I started off wrong. I had my bow. I think actually it was two years ago. I had my bow. And it was before I got my new one. So I didn't even shoot that great with it. But I thought I could. And what do you have now for your bow? I think it's an elite. And my papa okay. just got it for me, but I I love it. I feel so much more confident with it compared to like how I used to shoot because mm. like I was not very good and I thought it was just me. And so Paul was like, "Well, let's get you a new bow, buddy, and we'll see how you shoot then." And we switched it over, and it's like a totally different story. Mm. I can shoot so much better. That day that we all went out there shooting, which bow did you have then? I had my pink one, I think. Oh, which is the? Is I that think the it elite? was no, that was a diamond. The older. It oh, okay, yeah, one. it was. I remember. Yeah. So it's just night and day difference. I thought it's you still totally shot different. good out there, but. It wasn't that great. But you feel better now for oh, sure. Oh, I feel way better. I feel confident, and I feel like I actually know I can hit something if I yeah. aim at it. I know. that's And that's the biggest part of it, right, is confidence. Yes. Yeah, I um, 
I did the same thing last year. I was trying to just do bow because I've killed one with a, a shotgun. So I'm like, I want to do something different. But now I'm like, you know what? We can get three turkeys out yes. here. Might as well get the first one out of the way with a shotgun. Because how many opportunities did you, you miss? Because uh, you missed a lot too because of only having a bow, right? Yeah, I missed. Okay, there was one morning where I, I didn't even know where I set up. Like, I'm not a great turkey seat, like our turkey hunter. Mm-hmm. I don't do it a lot. And usually I'm just by myself because, like, dad and Jack will pair up and then I'll go somewhere and I'll just walk around. And, of course, like, I'm not – I don't know anything like – I don't do calls. I don't do anything like that. So it's just off of what I, like, hear mm-hmm. and I'll follow them. Or I'll just wait it out and think where they're going to go. And so I went up and sat right under where they, were like, roost in a mm-hmm. tree. And I had – I have a video of it. It's, like – I think it's, like, 14 or 15, maybe even more turkeys. They're just flying over. And I only had my bow. And they literally just surrounded me, like – I couldn't move. It was a terrible feeling because, like, it was <laughs> awesome. Well, like, anywhere you turned, you knew you are going to one see you, mm-hmm. and then they're going to tell the other ones. And so, like, I had just been sitting there for, like, it was, like, 10, 11 minutes. And all of a sudden, I hear something, and I, like, turn my head, but my bow's right here, and I have my rangefinder on my neck. It is a huge tom. Its beard is literally just dragging. <laughs> and I knew, I like, if I pulled, it was going to go. It's like I tried to turn my body, and I was watching it, and it started doing, like, the noise where uh-huh, it hears you. Yeah, so I knew I couldn't really move, and I wanted to, like, get it on video, too, but, of course, like, that was out of my mind by then, and I was like, okay, I just got to try, and so, like, I turned and pulled at the same time, but by then it jumped over, like, those rock fences Uh that they used to build. Yeah. It was, like, in that area, and it was gone. Uh I was like, literally, it was so terrible, because if I would have had my shotgun, I could have got it easy. It was, like, 10 yards away or less, Mm -hmm. and so, like, I could have maybe if I would have been a little faster, but, like, I didn't have a real chance at it. Yeah. But, like, I missed that opportunity. But I did shoot at a Jake that day. Did you? Yeah, but it was, like, 45 yards, and it was a mistake. (laughs) I totally (laughs) went over its back. Uh, I didn't know about missing the turkeys. I I was shooting from downhill, and it just didn't go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a guy. uh, I follow Knock on Autry. It's uh, Dudley. He's a really good shot, and he talks about those, like, steep incline shots or the shooting downhill shots. Mm -hmm. You're always aiming low. But because of that right there. I just got a new string on mine, so I'm I'm hoping it's definitely made a difference. I could tell because I had the stock one because I just have a bear, and then I bought a new string, and it's definitely made a difference. They ain't cheap though. <laughs> it was like 180 all. bucks or something for Bow the string. Bow stuff is probably one of the most expensive things yeah. I feel like. Even arrows, they are so expensive. Yeah. Do you use um, like a smaller diameter size arrow, or do you just use in whatever? I just use whatever my papa tells me to. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Exactly well, he, we what know it is. that he likes the good <laughs> stuff, so I'm sure. Yes, you're I'm taking sure care it's of. like top notch. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of anything else we haven't even covered. I mean, I know we could sit here and talk forever. Um, well, let's let's end with this. So, what's your plans for this off season video video content wise and then rolling the duck season like kind of what do you have a game plan of what you're going to do um, and put out That's what I'm trying to figure out cuz right now like I just have like reviews I can do and then like cooking videos I can do but like not really I have dove coming up but other than that I got to start like finding stuff to do a lot of people have requested fishing so I got to okay. figure out a way to get Johnny or someone cuz it's it's got to happen I've like I did a post on something and like every single one was fishing and I'm not even like I can't fish so they're going to like probably judge me on that if I post a video on it <laughs> but I might try to get a few of those out this summer and then other than that I don't really know yet yeah no that sounds like you got a good game plan I mean even if you were bank fishing I mean still yeah you're still I like there. kayak fishing I that think that's is fun. fun I actually I love kayak fishing we at me me Johnny and Colton and Talon used to do it a ton I, went I with, need to start doing it again it's so much fun I went with Johnny and Adam and John a few years back and it was a blast I need to do that we need to do that for sure you and we did well you did well. Yeah, I feel obviously like you're you not do. traveling as far because no. you're not going way out in the lake. But I still think it's fun though. It is fun. It is fun. I don't know why I forget about that because I actually love doing that. We had a blast doing that, and right now is a great time. It is to get out there and start fishing. So yeah, I'll be. We'll be looking forward to those <laughs> those fishing videos. <laughs> yeah, just th- you know, get out there, put a worm on, and just go for it. <laughs> Plastic worm. Be careful though, because it's in a pricey, pricey hobby to get into. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it worse is. than ducking. I don't care what anybody says. I've done both. Now, if you're doing it out of well, a kayak, it's not it's as bad. It's not as bad, but a boat is expensive. That's what I mean. If you're doing it a boat, the gas in it and mm-hmm. take care of it, that's where it is. But yeah, if you're just in a kayak, I mean, it's just your baits. So, 
Well, and gas, get up there now the way stuff is with gas. Gas it's, is outrageous. It's six bucks a gallon for everything you go to. But anyways, well, again, guys, check Olivia Helton out on YouTube. That's the name of the channel. I'm. You probably plan on leaving it that, don't you? Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't plan on changing it. I think it's it. good that it's your name. Sometimes that, that is you, so I mean, yeah. li why not leave it we at that? We all have a whole bunch of different ideas it could be, and I just didn't feel like I actually wanted any of them. Yeah. So I was like, I'll just stick with my name. I think that's a good idea. Because you know what, that's it's who you are. Um, I think it's great, and it's a cool name. I've always liked that name, Olivia. In <laughs> fact, you. I think that was a name I suggested Sarah for the girls, and she's like, "Oh, Violet." So I'm like, okay. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, it's a cool name. You're doing well on your channel, Thank and you. thanks for coming on. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you guys on the next one.